even a little bit hairy and complicated. And I don't know, Ulysses, it seems like the Pinellas County commissioners, they have the reservations. St. Pete City Council has their reservations. And then the Tampa Bay Rays have been completely silent about the whole matter since Hurricane Milton touched down three plus weeks ago. So I think, and I know we're, we're going to get into the weeds a little bit on this, but my ultimate solution right here is we need to get everybody at the table. You are Locked on Rays, your daily Tampa Bay Rays podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into Locked On Rays, your daily podcast covering everything Tampa Bay Rays. From game analysis to player interviews, we've got you covered with all the latest news and insights. My name is Kevin Weiss. I'm Ulysses Sombrano. Bringing you expert analysis and passionate discussions about our beloved Rays. Whether you're a diehard fan who vividly remembers Longo's Game 162 just like us. Or you remember the early Devil Ray days of Wade Boggs and Carl Crawford. We are here to break down every play, every trade, and every milestone. In fact, this is our sixth season covering the race daily. And every season up till 2024, they've gone to the playoffs. But you can still grab your favorite race gear, settle in, and subscribe to our Locked and Rays YouTube channel and other podcast platforms. You can also find us on X and Instagram at Lockdown Rays. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. You can start the season with a big, big, big return on FanDuel. New customers can place a $5 bet, and you'll get started with a $150 in bonus bets if you win your first $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. All right. Um, everybody's favorite topic, Tropicana Field Dilemma where the Rays will play in 2025, 2026, 2027, and maybe beyond. There is some movement and news, and maybe not so much in a good way as the politicians have spoken. Mm. And things to me, I was actually talking to a friend about this on Saturday, could get a little bit hairy and complicated. And I don't know, Ulysses, it seems like, the Pinellas County commissioners, they have the reservations. St. Pete City Council has their reservations. And then the Tampa Bay Rays have been completely silent about the whole matter since Hurricane Milton touched down three plus weeks ago. So I think, and I know we're, we're going to get into the weeds a little bit on this, but my ultimate solution right here is we need to get everybody at the table. We need to have a workshop. We need yeah. to have a task force. We need to get everybody talking, bantering, throwing ideas, and finding solutions uh, as opposed to making uh, threats and what-ifs and so on. It's just my thought there. No, I think you're 100% correct. But I want to tackle the thing you said about the Rays being completely silent because it is true. They've been – I think they did one um, bit of a, a statement, maybe two – Right after, yeah. like one right after, and then two, like a couple of days later, saying, Hey, we need to just, you know, take our time with this, which is more than understandable. The thing is, though, it's been close to now a month, right? Yeah. I think the, it landed on October 8th. So we're short of a month. And I feel like the reason for them being silent is because uh, MLB is telling them, Hey, okay, we are not saying anything until. We know because what is there to update about? Hey, we're still figuring it out. Yeah, they, they, people can, fi people can <laughs> tell. Uh, but I don't think that they want to just retract anything. MLB usually is not very good with public uh, relations, they right. usually kind of drop the ball. Um, so I think this is just a, an opportunity for them to not drop the ball. And although we would want a little bit more information, because of course we want some. I think the Rays are being quiet because MLB is saying we're not speaking about this until we really know what we're doing. Let's see how much is the roof, how much is insurance going to pay out, how much uh, is it is it going to be for the Rays to pay, how much is it from MLB to maybe help out uh, in that case of emergency uh, break glass if we need to give people money because you know hurricanes are hurting roofs in yes. Florida, like. 
all of that, I think, needs to be completely figured out before the Rays are out there, you know, telling quotes. Um, and just to reiterate what they released in a public statement uh, that we found on Twitter slash X, this was dated on October 10th, 2024. During the past couple of weeks, our beloved city, region, and state have been impacted by Hurricanes Helene and Milton. We are devastated by the damage incurred by so many. Our priority is supporting our community and our staff. We are fortunate and grateful that no one was hurt by the damage to our ballpark last night. Over the coming days and weeks, we expect to be able to assess the true condition of Tropicana Field. In the meantime, we are working with law enforcement to secure the building. We ask for your patience at this time, and we encourage those who can donate to organizations in our community that are assisting those directly impacted by these storms. Now, there has been some movement in the case of the St. Pete Council divvying up $6 million or so to waterproof Tropicana Field. Um, and then from there, they will be able to learn the extensive damage of the facility. So there's a couple of things at play here. One, yeah. St. Pete, the elected officials anyway, mm -hmm. and I would imagine the administrators and the C-suite staff uh, with the city, uh, they want to rehabilitate the TROP and get it back up to snuff to make sure they are within agreement of their agreement with the Rays that says that they must basically provide a, a suitable major league ballpark. So that is yeah. that is the one step that they have taken in a good measure. On the other side, you have Pinellas County for one reason or another, if the Tropicana field uh, isn't available by opening day or the beginning of the season, whatever it may be, they are basically strong arming and saying, okay, we understand Tropicana Field may not be ready for play, but wherever you go, it's got to be in Pinellas County. So that really leaves three options, I would think. That leaves Outlang, that leaves Bay Care, and that leaves Dunedin. Right. So we got Phillies, Blue Jays, and Rowdies. <laughs> yes. Basically, essentially. Uh, and I think... Alang also needs to have some renovations being made, like because of the hurricane. Like yeah. there, there was there was some damage there too. So, I mean, my guess yeah. would be all of them had to have some sort of damage right. to some extent. Fair, Whether fair enough. Fate, whatever, maybe. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So only in Pinellas, and I have a quote here from Commissioner Chris. Uh, how do you pronounce his last name? Latvala. Latvala. Okay. He says one could make the argument that the Rays are kind of violating the spirit of the agreement that we approved two months ago if they go across the bridge or go to Disney World to play for the next three years. If the Hurricanes hit three years from now, they would have to play their games in Pinellas County. And I agree with that sentiment, Kevin. Yes. But before I tell you why I agree with that sentiment, but not all the way through, I think you need to say something very important. Yes, we need to tell the audience a couple of them very important things, and one of those is FanDuel. Get ready to tackle the NFL action with FanDuel. That is America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers can bet $5 and get 150 in bonus bets if you win. The FanDuel Sportsbook app gives you everything you need to place live bets on the NFL all in one place. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, -play, and so, so much more on the same page where you place your bets. Just visit FanDuel.com to join today. You'll get started with $150 in bonus bets if you win your first $5 bet. That's FanDuel.com. Never waste a hunch and make every moment more with FanDuel an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. We all know we have our aches and pains. And when we have that, we have a perfect place to go to, Kevin. Do you know what that place is? Uh, that would be the joint. That would be the joint. And you know what? You're like, oh, where, where's the closest one? Very easy. You go to thejoint.com. You put your zip code and bada bing, bada boom, you get it. Okay. They say this is the closest to your place of work. Maybe to your house, wherever you want to go to, you can do it. And you know why it doesn't matter? Because they're not strict with scheduling. You can just walk in there, okay? In a weekend, uh, after work, you can do that. It's very flexible. And 
They make it easy for you so that there's no insurance hassles, okay? It's straightforward, budget-friendly care for you that you can take. So, you know, you get a little pep in your step, Kevin. I know you have some back problems, and I know that when you go yes. to the joint, you feel a little bit better. So that can be you. And if you're a Bucks fan and you're a race fan, you're in luck because they have a tremendous offer for their first visit, $19. That's it. And in order to get this, you go to buccaneers.com, you check out the contest and promotion sections under the fans tab, and you download this offer. A great deal for great fans. So remember, go to the joint.com to find your nearest Tampa area location today. All right, Ulysses, continuing on the topic at Bay, uh, Chris Latvala, you read his statement or his quote from one of the recent meetings, and you agree with it in one sense and disagree with it in another sense, I presume. Yeah, I, I understand what they're trying to say. Like, well, if it hits in three years, well, you're going to go somewhere else? Like, no, they're not. And I and I get the spirit of it, but, bro, the roof is off. Yeah. The roof is literally off, and there's no drainage system, and there's a, a bunch of things that need to be taken care of. I, I uh, And, again, that goes back to it's kind of the city's obligation to provide a suitable – facility for the Rays. Otherwise, they're kind of in breach of their contract. And, and there's some questions that the Rays, if they're being this silent on it, lawsuit could be imminent uh, based on some of the tea leaves from some of those meetings that you've either listened to or read uh, some of the bullet points of, like the attorney for St. Petersburg. I can't remember her name at the moment, but she's like, being uh, vague about what she's saying because there are some concerns there, unfortunately. And right before the the season, the insurance was like uh, taken off from, I believe, a hundred or seventy five to twenty five million yeah. insured. So there are questions. You're right. There are definitely questions here. I understand what he's saying. I just feel like this is like a once in a blue moon situation, man. Like, I, I don't think you can just like equate this to like any other hurricane because we've lived a lot of hurricanes and none of them have, you know, blown the, the roof off. That is true. Yeah. They say, hey, according to people, it's a hundred year storm, 200 year storm, maybe 500 year now, storm. But now we have said here from a Geiger engineers, I think uh, they said that roof was supposed to start getting updates in 2015 has it had updates maybe maybe not but uh that's troubling if yeah. there hadn't been any updates to it and nobody raised their hand however i don't think that moving to steinbrenner field or port charlotte and i'm just saying these two things just because we've been talking about them lately right I don't think that's I don't think it should be seen as a breach of contract if you're putting shovels in the ground like hey this is just temporary. I right. think that's the thing that gets lost a little bit here in his statement it's that this is not just a we're moving we're going for 3 years like hopefully it's just for like 3 months. Just like with four months. Toronto because of COVID they played in Dunedin for a couple months then had to play in Buffalo. Sometimes there's crazy things that happen in this world that make yeah. you uh relocate course until you can get back into your original home exactly so exactly um what's interesting too uh did you mention already that the vote was delayed on the bond for no but let's talk about that yeah, yeah see what what is kind of mind-boggling to me is that all the like the delayed vote i i guess i understand that to some extent but my understanding was once we had the press conference once the contracts were signed, once hands were shaken and babies were kissed and you did a whole ticker tape parade about, hey, the Rays are staying in St. Petersburg and they're going to cash in on the redevelopment, $6 billion redevelopment plan, that that was it. I mean, really, the, these next three years shouldn't impact that one way or the other, that we're going to have shovels in the ground sometime before the end of the year, hopefully. If there's a storm, okay, push it back couple weeks or a month or two months and then get down to business for 2027 2028 but yeah. evidently i guess people are are going back on their word perhaps i thought the the votes were already counted and that we were moving this thing forward like what the hell you know what it is i think it's it's that uh legalese that they put these 
votes and this little things as like trackers. Yeah. So that like, Hey, 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 we can still, we can still, you know, bleep you if you Mm -hmm. bleep with us, you know? Um, so yeah, there's a, a bond issuance that must be voted on by November 19th for the funding a plan to be approved and to proceed okay. it's by the county commission november 19th that's in 15 days yeah 15 days so hold on to your butts uh yeah. i'm hopefully i'm thinking what they want with this and this is me being extremely positive is they just want to hear something from mlb and the race this is them strong arming them with something that they care about. So, hey, get, give us some news. You haven't told us anything that you're going to do. You're being very mum about it. Right. Let's out with it so that we can know what we're doing as a city, as a county. Uh, are, are, is our money going the right way or the wrong way? Are we just funding you for something that it's not going to happen? Like, this is their style of, like, putting a little bit of fire to MLB and Stu saying, like, okay, come on, we need some answers. I know it sucks, but let's let's yeah. get some answers now. What's your action plan? Let's start moving things forward a little bit. Uh, We have more to discuss, but first we have to tell the audience something else very important. And that is our friends at Game Time. Game Time is a really cool feature because you can take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time picks and all their features that they have. They have all in pricing, they have seat views, They have lowest price guarantee. They even have ticket coverage that your purchase is covered with the most flexible customer service policy in the uh, ticketing industry. Uh, Ulysses, am I correct in assuming that uh, you use game time, not just for for raised games, but concerts and all the like, right? Comedy, theater, candlelight concerts, people. You can do it anything on game time. And guess what? My favorite, you know what my favorite part about game time is, Kev? What is your favorite part? The seed views, you get the panoramic view of your seat right from yes. your phone so you know what to expect. Yes, that is true. Um, it is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. Filter only incredible deals on great seats with game time picks. See the view from your seat, as Ulysses mentioned, on your phone before you buy. All in pricing allows you to show your total cost up front. And you buy tickets in seconds with two tap so go ahead download the game time app create an account and use code l-o-c-k-e-d-o-n-m-l-b that's locked on mlb for twenty dollars off your first purchase terms apply again create an account and redeem code locked on mlb l-o-c-k-e-d-o-n-m-l-b for twenty dollars off download game time today what time is it it is game time all right, last couple moments here of the program. Uh, Ulysses, I'll ask you flat out. Um, yep. Scale of 1 to 10, the race Stadium deal falls apart. That St. Pete and the commission don't approve the votes or go back on their word, and the $6 billion redevelopment deal and new stadium proposal is at odds and... The Rays say, see you later, see you later, Tampa Bay. We're going to Nashville. We're going to Charlotte. We're going to Montreal. Whatever. I thought we were, um, I, I, I thought we were done with these questions. I know that's what I thought, but I guess it's I thought, uh I thought we were done. Uh, it's rearing its ugly head uh for right now. So one to ten, ten being that the rays are gone, they're remaining silent for a reason. They're trying to get an out clause and try to uh cut bait and move elsewhere, considering also simultaneously uh, Stu Sternberg is trying to find uh, new investors, and they probably want some uh, awareness as to what's going on with this whole situation. Uh, One being that, no, 100% the Rays are going to play in St. Petersburg for generations to come. I I think this is just a little bit of a a vote. Of a pebble in the shoe, I, okay. I I I I I refuse to accept a world where these questions are again legitimate worries. I'm not. They did the bleeping ticket parade ish at Tropicana Field. They had the, yes. the, the the kissing of the babies. The kissing of the babies occurred. You cannot revert 
on the kissing of the babies. Politicians, you did this. You you did this. Okay, we, yeah. we're done. I think this is just a way for the county and the and the city to just kind of pull some answers from from the raise and the raise in MLB and, and saying, hey, we we need to make sure what 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 are we doing here? And just like you're saying that maybe they're quiet because of a possible uh suing them situation well maybe that's also why they're doing this to know if hey are we gonna get sued is this yeah. what what's happened what's your what are you what are you guys thinking uh this is just to think a, a, a way of making them get some information okay get some information follow-up point uh we did put it out on social media i know we've asked this question a couple times but uh in light of some of the new information that's come about, uh, will the Rays play in the Trop at all in 2025? We put it on X uh, and Twitter. Uh, 30% say no, or 70% say no. 70% say no, 30% say yes. So people are very bearish on the idea that the Trop will be up and running anytime in 2025. I don't know. I mean, the St. Pete is seem to be, even if they're grudgingly doing it, um, they're already moving the ball forward by getting the trap waterproofed and then figuring out what, what the situation is from there. So I feel like yeah. that is a good sign, but there's still uh, much more work in investigation and inspections and building to be done if it gets to that point. Um, so what say you, are you still 50, 50 on the matter? I think, I think they will play at the trop, but it's going to be less than 50% of the season. Okay. That's we're fair. Look, yeah. We're looking like August, September, something like that. Right. And then at that point, that's, that makes me think, what is it? It's like a player. Like, why are you going to rush it? Why do you right. have to make it? Can, can you, if you already have approved the living situation, the airport situation, the renovations for a minor league stadium or whatever stadium you decide to play in, if you are okay with doing that for two, three months, well, what's the harm in doing four, five, six months? Like, I, I think that's the issue. I would say part of the issue is who is on the hook for the lost revenues if the Rays are to play in Outlang or Baycare or Steinbrenner Field? Because again, like we've mentioned, you've only got, you know, 65 to 10,000 seats versus. 16,000, 17,000 that the Rays are regularly getting out of attendance. So who is going to, th that's a lot of money over the course of time, not to mention the yeah. implications. I mean, we talked about, you know, free agents not really being uh, ready and willing to come uh, if you're having to move around from ballpark to ballpark, but also the heat and humidity, I feel like would wear down the Rays over time. Um, you know, it's one, one thing to have a, a team come in for a three game series, but if you're going to, be playing 50 60 home games uh in an outdoor minor league park and you're dealing with rain, rain delays i feel like that could ultimately impact the the play on the field and the results on which, the field so that's not a good sign either which then should tell us and i'm just putting this on on the baseball side of things if you know that your team is going to be already behind the eight ball with the physicality of playing in outdoor minor league stadiums and all that it that pertains to rain yeah. delays, staying up later, maybe uh, more difficult uh, airplane rides, uh, bus rides to and from, all of those things being away from your family more than usual, like all of those things. Why would you, as a front office, put the pedal to the metal and right. go all broke for 2025. Yeah. So this really could be kind of an excuse, quote unquote, to just keep retooling. Yeah. Keep the same group pretty much. Uh, little tweak here and there, and then you're ready to pull the trigger when it. the drop yeah. is up to snuff and you're getting closer to hopefully a new stadium. Because again, this, the stadium issue is not the only thing that the Rays are dealing with right now. We are basically in hot stove league. We are in off season. Yep. You you have options to consider. You have Rule Five prospects to add or not add. You have tenders and non tenders. You have trades and free agents afoot. There's a lot going on. Uh, meantime, plus the stadium deal and the whole Wander situation, which we'll get to later on in the week. Uh, but I'll just put this nugget out here. We don't have to get into it too deeply. But I do find it interesting. I don't know if you heard this, Ulysses, but uh, we did a whole episode on the Savannah Bananas. They were going to play at Tropicana Field March mm -hmm. 15th, March 16th. 
hurricane happens. Okay, you got a reverse course again. Uh, they are instead playing one date, to my knowledge, March 16th at Raymond James Stadium. So my thought is perhaps a little test run. How does baseball work at RJS? I think I think so, but I would be more willing to accept this as a test run if it was at the latest by January. Okay. March 16th, you need to figure out where the hell you're playing. You, you need to, I think you need to know by the end of this year where you're playing. Right. But I'm sure the, the Bananas are doing some logistical measures in concert with the folks that run sure, before Stadium, Martin, Tampa Sports yes. Authority. Hey, where are people going to sit? How is yep. the field going to be positioned? Yes. What is, uh, how is it all going to work? And that home runs be- over the cannons, you know? Yes, that I like that idea. Yeah. 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 yeah, there we go. All right, so more on that. I um, hope you all enjoyed again. Still more on this topic uh, in the ensuing days, weeks, and months. Uh, we thought it was over, but uh, evidently not. And as much as we crapped on Tropicana Field, it's funny because it's like we kind of want Tropicana Field back in this moment. Um, yeah. Interesting how the tables have turned in that respect. So, all right. I uh, hope you all have a wonderful day. Stay safe. And we will talk to you tomorrow.